Kanina kinakabahan po ako nang narinig ko si ate dyan. Naging okay na. Tayo po tayong lahat. Shall we all stand? And um, let's open our Bibles in the book of Exodus chapter 17. And we'll read from verses 8 to 16. And let's uh, read this responsively. Then came Amalek and fought with Israel in Rephidim. So Joshua did as Moses had said to him and fought with Amalek. And Moses, Aaron, and Hur went up to the top of the hill. But Moses' hand were heavy, and they took a stone and put it under him, and he sat thereon, and Aaron and Hur stayed up his hands, and one on the, one, on the one side and the other on the other side, and his hands were steady until the going down of the sun. And the Lord said unto Moses, Write this for a more for a memorial in a book, and rehearse it in the ears of Joshua. For I will utterly put out the remembrance of Amalek from under heaven. And altogether, for he said, because the Lord had sworn that the Lord will have war with Amalek from generation to generation. Let's pray. God, thank you for this day. Thank you for, for the whole day of worship. Lord, um, guide us this hour. You, know, uh, you give us wisdom in studying your word. Give words to your servant. And um, we just pray for the, for the whole day that we can glorify you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You may be seated. So this is not a new story for, for, for most of us. So here we can um, see the, 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 the fight of Israel against Amalek. It was actually a parabang na nabigla yung Israel during this time because they were attacked by the Amalek. And, th and during this time, Moses was already old and he was actually near his, um, near his death and he knew what he can do if, if a battle will, will come. And um, so he, he knew his deficiencies and he knew how God can use him. And during this time, um, as Amalek actually, yes, attacked them, so what Moses did was he asked um, his servant Joshua, and this was actually um, Joshua's first account, and later on he will, he will be the successor of Moses. So he, he, he commanded Joshua to choose men, uh, to choose men to fight against Amalek. And then, um, as Moses being old, he cannot do the things that he, was, he, used, he used to do. So what he did was he, he, he went uphill with Aaron and her to pray. And, um, and while Joshua was battling against Amalek, we all know the story. Now, while he was praying, while Moses was praying, with, with both of his hands raised, nananalo um, sila when his hands are raised. But when... Um, his hands are down, then the Israel is losing. So, and as a result, and as a result, the battle when the battle against Amalek and Moses, uh, the bat the battle, they won the battle against Amalek and Moses built an altar for a remembrance to give God all the glory. And as individuals, we have our own personal battles in life. But as a church, being part of a local New Testament church. We all share the same battle, a spiritual battle, kagaya nga na sinabi ni Pastor yesterday. And we battle together for the glory of God using the Bible as our main and only weapon. And we have our own respective ministries, gifts, resources to utter and give to God. In Ephesians chapter 6, verse 12, For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, 
against spiritual wickedness in high places. So God gives importance to people who's faithfully doing and fighting for what's right before God. If Joshua was not there to fight Amalek, or if si Aaron or either si Hur lang yung kasama ni, ni Moses, then it would, the, the result would be different. So they, they, they all had their um, respective, let's say, mission or respective ministries. And um, so the same thing goes for Gideon's 300. They started from 22,000 to 10,000 and down to 300. I'm sure yung 300 na yon, they couldn't understand it at first when they're going to battle because it's but sila pa onte nang and it's it's supposed to be kasi baba, magbabatal sila so they're supposed they're supposed to be uh, the number is supposed to be growing instead of um, lessening so ayun nga and so it's a complete contradictory to what we're, we're naturally um, kung ano yung natural sa pananaw natin, sa wisdom ng, ng tao. And if one or some were not sold out dun sa commitment and sa command ng Panginoon kay Gideon, then siguro ma mababawasan pa yung 300 na yun. And it would go up lesser and lesser. And then, but then, we all know that 300 were victorious because they were com committed regardless of the weapons given to them. And they were outnumbered by the enemy plus the fact that yung mga weapons nga na binigay ng Panginoon sa kanila, ano, anin ba nila yung pichel, anin ba nila yung, yung lampara, and um, the trumpet. But, but what they had in common was they trusted the Lord. And if we'll just use our knowledge, then we'll think this is a complete mistake. But clearly, Gideon and the 300 knew better because they just trusted God. They knew God was fighting for them. And all they had to do was trust, was to trust, and then to obey. And same goes for Aaron and her. If they have doubted the power of God, the outcome would have probably been different. If one doubted, if si Aaron nga lang nandun, paano nila matatanggo pa yan yung Amalek? And if, um, if, if Aaron uh, thought of it as a joke, just lifting up Moses' hand, then they would be uh, nananalo sila. And then if he thought of it as a joke, then this is complete the story. We'll be reading another account. And um, everyone must be sold out. If one will not do their part, then the whole body suffers. And it's a great privilege to serve the only and the living God. Sabi nga rin kanina, wala naman talagang nasa gitna. It's either you are with God or you're not with God. And maybe the reason, and siguro sabi natin, if may nakikita tayong hindi talaga sold out sa Panginoon, maybe it's because um, you're not really part of the family. You're not really part of the, the church. And um, let's check our hearts, pray and repent, and ask God to give wisdom to put things in proper order. Let's allow God to be glorified in our lives and much more to serve Him to the place where He, cur where he currently placed you at. We're all an instrument of God, and if all instruments are in harmony, then the sound will, will be beautiful not only to God, but to all of us as a blessing and an encouragement. And in, in Psalms 133, um, Behold how good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. And unity gives us encouragement. It's a great blessing to keep serving our God. And let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for this time. Thank you for your word. Thank